Okay, guys, our lesson for today is on equations and inequalities with rational numbers. So, just like we've done before, we're going to be solving it, equations and inequalities. Remember, an equation is something like 2x plus 6 equals 20, and we need to solve that. Uh, inequalities, on the other hand, is something like negative 5y minus 6 is greater than or equal to 15. So inequalities are when we have this greater than or equal symbol here. And remember the big trick with um, greater than or equal to is we solve it just like, uh, or not just greater than or equal to, but any inequality. We solve it just like a regular equation, except if this number right here that's with the variable ends up being a negative, this inequality symbol is going to have to be switched because what we're going to end up eventually having to do in this problem is to get rid of that negative 5y is divide by negative 5. Okay, and our rule was um, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, number the ine inequality symbol has to be flipped. Okay, so we're going to have to remember that trick today. Um, now, today's lesson, since it's talking about doing equations and inequalities with rational numbers, just means that we're going to have things like, now we're going to have fractions involved here. All right? And we're going to have to be able to solve that. So fractions will be in our equations. And also we could have things like decimals that end up being in our problem. Okay, so that's all rational numbers are. And they're now going to be part of our equations, and we're going to have to solve some of these um, with those things in there. And we got a couple tricks up our sleeves to help us with that. Okay, so the first thing here, I got example one. You can see it's an equation uh, with rational numbers. And you'll see up top there I wrote that we're going to do this by clearing fractions. So what this means is if I have an equation that has fractions in it, I can really get rid of the fractions, okay? Because it's easier if I have an equation that doesn't have any fractions in it. So that's going to be our goal is to somehow find a way to be able to get rid of the denominators so that we have just regular numbers and no fractions. So what I want to look at right now are these denominators. The way that we're going to clear fractions is to take those denominators, the 6, the 2, and the 4, and I want to think of a common denominator uh, for all of those. So I'm coming up with a common denominator. Okay? So you guys can all do that. 6, 2, and 4, while well, I come up with that, they all go into 12 here. So what ends up happening, what ends up happening, get rid of my ink here, uh, is since the common denominator is 12, to clear fractions, what I'm going to do is take every single term in this equation, every one here, and I'm going to multiply it by 12. So I'm going to take this 12 and multiply it by the negative 5 6 Okay? I'm going to take this 1 half and I'm going to multiply that by 12. And remember, since 12 is a whole number, I'm going to put it over 1. And the 3 fourths, I'm going to multiply it by 12. So we find a common denominator, and we multiply every single term in the equation by that common denominator. Because look what happens. If I start with the first term, the negative 5, 6, x. What's ended up happening now when I'm multiplying fractions is the 12 and the 6 end up being reduced. They become 2 and 1. And if I finish that multiplication on top, I have 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. On bottom, I have 1 times 1 is 1, so that just goes away. It clears the fraction, and it leaves me with negative 10x. Okay, plus, now I work on the middle parentheses here, where I have 1 half times 12 over 1. Well, the 2 and the 12 reduce to a 1 and a 6. On top, I get 1 times 6, which is 6. On bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. 6 over 1 is 6. So again, it clear, what ends up happening is we end up clearing these fractions, and we're going to end up with just whole numbers in our thing here. The 4 and the 12 end up becoming 1 and 3. On top, you get 3 times 3, which is 9, over 1. Okay, so by clearing the fractions, I end up with this equation, which is negative 10x plus 6 equals 9. Um, now I can go ahead and solve this just like we've solved the equations before. Okay, I get rid of a plus 6 by subtracting 6. Okay, they slash kill. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, giving me negative 10x equals 3. Okay, I get rid of the negative 10 that's being multiplied by the x by dividing by 10. So they slash kill, and I divide by 10 over here. Now, I end up getting x equals, and this is where we have to learn how to write our final answer. All right, I have 3 divided by negative 10, and if I actually do that and do 3 divided by 10, I'm going to end up getting a decimal. Well, here's the thing. 
since our original problem all had fractions, okay, then I don't want to change them to decimals. That's kind of the rule, okay? It's okay to have fractions, it's okay to have whole numbers, but the only time you ever write your answer as a decimal is if there's decimals already in the problem. My problem didn't have any decimals in there, so I better not have a decimal as my answer. What we got to get used to is look at this and say, well, 3 divided by 10, well, isn't that already just a fraction form? I don't have to do the division. I can actually just leave it as a fraction, the negative 3 tenths. Okay? So it's okay not to have to do that division. Just leave it as a fraction. Okay, here's example two. Uh, I would like you guys to solve this uh, problem by clearing the fraction. So give it a try on your own. Pause the video. Okay, you're back. Now, I do want to remind us that if you're you know, on your own and doing these problems and, and you don't remember how to clear the fractions, you can do it just the old way by getting rid of 7 tenths by subtracting 7 tenths. And you would do that to both sides. They cancel here. We're able to do it that way. We've learned how to do that. Okay? However, it takes a little bit more work because you've got to come up with things like common denominators and such like that. We're trying to show you a shortcut that's going to help you get rid of working with fractions. So I see my denominators are 2, 10, and 5. Uh, to me, common denominator is going to be 10. So I'm going to multiply by the common denominator, which is 10, for each of these things. So that's going to be multiplied by 10. This middle term, the 7 tenths, is going to be multiplied by 10. And the 4 over 5 is going to be multiplied by 10. And we just have to do each of these multiplications. The 2 and the 10 become 1 and 5. And that on top is 5 times 1. It gives me 5x. It's actually over 1, but the over 1 would go away. Plus, the 10s reduce to 1 and 1, leaving me with 7 in the middle. The 5 and the 10 become 1 and 2, which leaves me 8 over there. Now that I've gotten rid of the fractions, okay, now I can go ahead and finish the problem. I get rid of a plus 7 by minusing 7, slash kill, minus 7 over there, giving me 5x equals positive 1. Get rid of that 5 that's times by the x by dividing by 5. They slash kill here, giving me x equals. Now, again, if I do 1 divided by 5, I'm going to get a decimal, 0.2. So I just don't do the, the dividing. I leave it as that fraction, 1 fifth. x equals 1 fifth. That's it. Okay, the other thing. So not only do we have tricks for clearing fractions, but we also have tricks for clearing decimals. There's a way to get rid of decimals. Now, again, I can always do this. Uh, the long way, which is to subtract the 5.14 from each side. Okay, and we've done things like that before, but then you got to worry about lining up decimal points and all those decimal rules. So we're going to show you a trick that lets you get rid of decimals. Basically, to do this, what we want to do is look at the number that has the most decimal places, which is the 5.14, because it has two decimal places, the 1 and the 4, the tenths and the hundredths. And what you're going to do is take the decimal point on that number, and move it so that it's all the way to the right because that changes the number to 514. But the rule is, since I moved it two decimal places on that number, I have to move it two decimal places on all of the other numbers. So this 2.3, it's got to be moved two places, which gives me 230 equals the 514 plus, and now the 0.8 it's also got to move two places, which makes it 80 m. Okay, so we're able to get rid of all of the decimals so that we just have a regular equation and now we can solve away. Uh, the downfall of clearing decimals is that you end up working with some fairly large numbers. So, like I said, that's just the downfall to it. But it is a shortcut that we can do. I get rid of the 514 by subtracting 514. They slash kill. I subtract 514 over here. Now, here's what you got to remember. It's a negative 514. It is a positive 230. The signs are different. I've got to subtract 514 and 230, which gives me 4, I borrow, it gives me 8, gives me 284, and since there were more negatives, the 514, that 284 is negative, equals 80m. Okay, now we can go ahead, divide by the 80, they go away, and I have to divide by 80 over here. Now on this problem, because there were decimals already in the problem, okay, 
then it's okay to have a decimal answer. The other problems didn't have a decimal. We couldn't have a decimal answer. This one has decimals. It's okay. So what I have to do here is actually do this division. I know it's going to be a negative divided by a positive, so my answer is going to be negative. I just have to figure out here 284 divided by 80. So I know 80 times 3 is 240. Okay. I subtract that and I end up getting 44. I'm going to have to add my decimal, bring it up here. Okay, bring down the zero. 80 goes into 440. Well, that's times 5. 5 times 80 is 400. That gives me 40 left over. And when I add my next zero and bring it down, 80 into 400 gives me 5 more there. So I end up getting. 3.55 when I do that, and don't forget, the negative was already there, okay, because this remainder would have ended up, ended up becoming a zero, okay? So be careful on your dividing there. All right, one last problem now uh, in inequality. So we're going to solve this just like we did all the other fractions. We're going to go ahead and clear the fractions, um, and just remember that we're dealing with an inequality. So if you end up having to multiply or divide by a negative number, we're going to switch the symbol. In fact, I know that whatever's touching the variable right there, if that's a negative, which it is, I know eventually my sign is going to be flipped. So I can tell right now that I'm going to reverse it. Now, if you want to go ahead and pause the video uh, and try it on your own, go ahead. If you would like to just watch me do it, uh, that would be fine too. So, okay. Denominators, 4, 8, and 4. Common denominator is going to be 8. So I'm going to multiply each of these things by 8. So 8 over 1 for each of them. And let's simplify it. The 4 and the 8 become 1 and 2, which gives me negative 6m minus the 8 and the 8 becomes 1. Okay, well that all becomes a 1, less than or equal to. The 4 and the 8 is a 1 and a 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then I can go ahead and solve the problem. Add 1 to each side. They cancel out, giving me negative 6m less than or equal to negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. Be careful with our uh, integer rules. Divide by the negative 6. Listen to what I said. We're dividing by negative 6, which means our symbol gets reversed. Divide by negative 6 on the other side. Uh, m is greater than or equal to negative divided by negative is a positive and I don't want to divide the 1 and the 6 because it's going to give me a decimal and there were no decimals to start with so I just leave it as the fraction 1 6. That's our final answer and that's our lesson for today.